Oh, here we go again. And just at this moment, Trouble decides to uh, get up and start playing with the chords. One second. Down. Oh, it's like he knew that it was 8 o'clock. Hi there. Welcome once again, everybody, to Cast Iron Wednesday. And I know I say this every Wednesday, but, well, it's true every Wednesday, where a lot of the uh, a lot of channels on YouTube uh, usually... Uh, decide to do a uh, cooking video in cast iron today on Wednesday. And that has given rise to the tradition cast iron Wednesday, which I have enjoyed the heck out of. And I very much encourage everybody else to do that too, because any excuse to cook in cast iron is a good one. So, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate everybody who has, well, already shown up. Uh, hello again to William Hurt, to Peg Tooth, Fluffy Otter One, Bookworm73, Jacob George, hello, and excuse me again. Oh, I don't believe this. He was asleep until about one minute ago. Okay. Um, all right, but yes, yeah, it, says, it says here, <laughs> William Hurt says, guess what's for dinner over this way? I was having chicken anyway, so I shall try this right along with you. Well, congratulations. I hope you like it. Uh, as close as I can. Anyway, too bad it won't be ready in time for the show. Yeah, and that's why I guess I should uh, start off by making a bit of a confession. However, nonetheless, um, <clears throat> Virginia, seems like years ago you posted this recipe on Facebook, and it's one of my absolute favorites. Well, again, I'm very glad you like it. This is one of my favorite recipes. It's simple. It's great comfort food. Let me bring this down here. And it satisfies my vinegar cravings. In fact, this dish is responsible for my vinegar cravings. Uh, yes, this is uh, what I call Ma's vinegar chicken. Uh, it is a, a recipe that's very uh, close to my heart because I would have been eating this for as long as I can remember. I, uh, ever since I was a wee toddler, I was eating vinegar chicken because mom and my nana all made have made this since well before I was born. And uh, yesterday, I guess I should say just once that yesterday is the one year date from uh, when uh, mom passed away. So no, I do not call these things an anniversary because an anniversary should be a remembrance of something happy. And yeah, obviously it was a, a somber day when that happened, but I am not saying that really to ask for pity. I mean, as I said, I, w I, was, I did some mourning for mom yesterday. However, um, nonetheless, um, this kind of, uh, oh, excuse me, number three already, down trouble. <laughs> However, nonetheless, thinking of mom is really what this uh, brought this dish to mind because, first of all, it's an excuse to uh, talk about enameled cast iron as well as to uh, cook something that, as I said, mom had been making for me ever since I was, uh, you know, I was uh, really just uh, learning how to uh, eat solid foods. This dish is almost certainly responsible for my vinegar addiction, which I've had all my life and which I have enjoyed. But as I mentioned already, tonight's subject, in addition to this, is going to be about enameled cast iron, which is uh, very popular. Um, and... Um, it seems like uh, a lot of people who are starting to get into the cast iron cooking start out with uh, an enameled cast iron pan or pot. And there's really nothing wrong with that because enameled cast iron is great for many things. And so without uh, further ado, let's change the view here a little bit and take a look at a few. Um, like for instance, as you can see, I've uh, got some of uh, my enameled cast iron pan uh, out here already, including the uh, Lodge uh, six quart enamel Dutch oven. This is a uh, two quart enamel uh, Dutch oven, which came from Bed Bath and Beyond. I got it around Valentine's Day, and you can see why. However, it is still a great uh, little Dutch oven, and you don't just have to uh, do this on Valentine's Day, which is why I'm doing this now. In fact, I'd better start because I'm also going to be cooking some rice. So. Let's start out with that, shall we? Give me a, a quick second here to throw in uh, three cups of water. And to this, we will be, once this thing comes to a boil, we will be adding 
uh, one and a half cups of rice, which is about the right size for a uh, cast iron pot of this, which again is about two quarts in size. So we'll start there, bring our, uh, yeah, that's the one. Start bringing our water to a boil and away we go. Meanwhile, as I mentioned, uh, this is the large six quart Dutch oven. And here's where I have to admit I kind of cheated tonight because this uh, chicken dish is meant to be used with raw chicken. You know, you start raw and uh, then you, uh, well, obviously you cook it in, uh, you stew it in uh, tomatoes and vinegar. But I have been cheating a little bit in that I have been boiling the chicken already for uh, maybe about the past half hour or so, largely because I want this thing, this dish to be finished in time for the, um, yeah, <clears throat> in before this uh, video is over. So um, that's not a uh, necessary step, and that's why it's not included in the recipe. I just did that really to speed up cooking the chicken. And besides, really, cooking it in tomatoes and vinegar from the beginning, of course, will infuse it with a lot more flavor. But I should still be able to uh, do a decent pot of uh, chicken with this nonetheless. So, uh, JD Hive, John Four. Hi. Thoughts on the FDA's allowable concentrations of lead, cadmium, etc., in various colors of enamel. Zero ppm should be the limit. I can uh, understand the. Uh, I can understand that. I mean, that's the uh, one thing about uh, enameled cast iron that uh, really has been uh, with us since the beginning, and that's one reason why I do not recommend using uh, cast iron from the uh, 19th century. In fact, for that, or enameled cast iron only, I should say, from the 19th century, for that reason that they did in fact use lead in the enamel glazes, but that has. Uh, largely since been removed. Um, but as for uh, my opinion about uh, use, the use of lead and cadmium in the, uh, enamel, in the enamel, it is they only use it in the outside. Oh, that's hot. In the outside and have long since removed lead from the enamel glaze on the inside, which is why it is safe to cook. And uh, furthermore, um, we do not, I mean, it is, uh, while there is some uh, cadmium in the uh, used in the coloring of the enamel, it's not likely really to leach through into our, um, into our uh, bodies because, after all, we are not cooking our food on the outside of the pan. At most, we are putting our hands on the outside, which is, again, protected by a glaze. And as such, um, I would rather uh, go with the... Um, safety precautions that are in that are enforced for uh, all makers of uh, enamel uh which uh, pretty much do their best to uh, try to uh, keep this uh, you know safe and for that reason i am still of the opinion that enameled cast iron is safe for cooking i mean as i said i'm not going to be cooking this chicken on the outside of this pan only on the inside which is not colored However, I better get started on this while I'm at it. So give me a second again to uh, uh, take this down and bring and uh, empty and uh, drain this because we're not going to be using water for this for the record or even chicken broth, although this would be a nice broth as it is. Uh, we're going to be stewing this pretty much entirely in tomatoes and vinegar, a nice thick uh, stew that way. So we always forget something. Oh, careful trouble. <laughs> like I forgot a second pot holder, for instance. And there we go. Okay. So. Mm. All right. That was easy enough. We simply have a uh, couple of pounds of uh, chicken pieces, and I was using uh, leg quarters, in fact. And now while we're at it, let me uh, move this slightly. Okay, come on. Try not to disconnect the sound this week. How about that? There we go. I'm trying to get a uh, better view of this. And it looks like, okay, excuse me. Apparently, I've got a cord going in the wrong direction here, so give me one second, please. Thank you very much, as always, for your patience. There we go. The cord was stuck in such a manner that I could not bring the camera cl as close as I wanted it. 
Ha. Thank you once again, as always, for your patience. Uh, this is just a little piece of skin that's stuck to it. So let's take care of that wooden uh, spoon. There we go. Now that we've done that, let's get down to uh, some business here. Anyway, as I said, JD, hi for those are my thoughts. I, I mean, zero PPM. I'm certain that really if they could uh, do a manner of uh, to have colored uh, enamel without uh, without uh, those, uh, you know, without the additives, um, then I would think that they would certainly do so. Uh, let me see. Meanwhile, Peg Tooth, my cat is scratching up to me. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, using baby blue Drew with windmills and tulips. Can't get any more Dutch than that. Oh, yeah. I drew a uh, Holland. I drew Holland. Well, that, that, that does sound nice. So, um, okay. So I'll just say uh, one more time as well, just to, just to uh, be clear where I stand. I mean, everybody, of course, has their own opinions. Um, my opinion is one that's really based on uh, pretty much what I've seen in my own research, looking for actual instances where uh, folks have been actually contaminated by, uh, now, you know, um, I've got this longstanding um, video out with a challenge about whether or not cast iron made in China uh, is contaminated with chemicals and or lead. And I have not seen any instances of that. I have seen a couple of instances uh, in, in news reports and otherwise of where it seems that uh, a few plain enamel uh, dishes uh, dish sets from uh, China did test over the uh, limits as far as um, yeah, as far as use of cadmium is concerned. But that was not enamel cast iron. That was a manufacturer that was not uh, using was not uh, using that. And furthermore, in addition to all that, this particular pan here is by Lodge Cast Iron, which has very very good quality control methods. As such, uh, I I for one do feel that Lodge Cast Iron is trustworthy enough to be, uh, buy their uh, enamel pieces from. So, all right. The fluff, those 11 uh, cast iron pieces that LLS, oh, Lady Liberty Stacker picked up, you meant. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting video. Anyway, uh, having get all, gotten down to all that, let's uh, get started here and do some actual cooking. As I mentioned already, this dish here is going to be a uh, vinegar chicken, which is something uh, I have been making and enjoying uh, really since I learned how to cook. And actually even before, one of the few things I think I made before I learned how to cook. A little bit of oil. And then once that comes in, before we add our chicken, this is some schmaltz here on the sides. Before we add our chicken, let's start, shall we? With a little bit of garlic, in this case, minced garlic. Of course, you want to do this quickly before the garlic burns. If I sounded hesitant in the way I was talking about enamel cast iron, it's largely because, uh, well, as you've seen already in these live presentations, I'm really not that good at making long uh, speeches or statements or the like. I would be much better doing a written statement than uh, trying to speak my piece. I will uh, freely admit that. However, I stand by what I said. And in addition to the garlic, throw in some onions. And once these onions are uh, softened, we will then throw in the chicken. And, th and that's pretty much almost all there is about this, uh, which I guess is what I want. I, I do want to say a few things about this dish, vinegar chicken, which, as I mentioned, is a dish that I, I has uh, very close to my heart. Um, yes, as I said, I've been eating this since I was a uh, toddler. Um, my, I have had a love of vinegar for my entire life, and I squarely place the blame or the credit for this on this dish. I remember Nana and Mom serving chicken 
that oh, had such a strong vinegar taste to it that it would clear my sinuses. It would make me salivate or drool. And I could even feel it in the back of my throat. So, yeah, I've, this, uh, my love of vinegar largely stems from this dish. <laughs> and uh, this is also, and in a way, unfortunately or fortunately, this is kind of the dish where I learned, realized uh, that my family were decent cooks, but not much more than that, unfortunately. You know, some people can claim to have fantastic chefs in their families, and I have to say mine, unfortunately, was not one of them. On my grandmother's side of the family, of course, I uh, come from an Italian family where every family has their own recipe for uh, pot, where Italian pasta sauce, and that includes mine, but uh, my family recipes are all very simple. Basically, I learned that my dear Nana was taught a few basic dishes, and she could do those few basic dishes very well, but that was about it. And this is about really about as basic as you can get. As I found out, this is really based on a uh, French dish of uh, chicken stewed in vinegar, where, again, they do get a little more elaborate than what we see here. Nonetheless, this is the dish that I grew up on, and as such, I'm certainly not complaining about that. That's why I haven't modified this dish. I am I am, uh, I've presented in the um, recipe... And I'm cooking it pretty much the way I have been eating it for uh, my entire life because you get, I don't, you know, because you can't improve on perfection, in my opinion. I'm sure other folks can improve on this and more power to you because, after all, you're the ones cooking it and you're the ones eating it. So, um, nonetheless, I am still uh, quite happy with this dish here. <laughs> And what else do we have? Humble peach. The only enamel Dutch ovens made in the U.S. is in the company Burrow Furnace. Yes, indeed. I have their bare iron Dutch oven. Well, that's good because they are unfortunately expensive. But yes, you're correct. Burrow Furnace has, in fact, broken <clears throat> the uh, long the uh, long standing rule that's been in place in decades, in that there are simply no enamelware makers, uh, or enamel cast iron makers, I should say, in the in the United States until Burrow Furnace decided to start doing it again, and more power to them. The real disadvantage to this is that Burrow Furnace literally makes all of their cast iron by hand, and that includes their enamel pieces, which means every piece from Burrow Furnace is a work of art. And as such, if you are lucky enough to own one, I, you definitely have my congratulations. That also means, again, that they're incredibly expensive, which, again, is what you get for buying a piece of artwork as well as a piece of cast iron. In addition, sadly, Burrow Furnace does not have the capacity to turn out enameled cast iron pans by the hundreds or the thousands and be able to send them to uh, big box stores all over the country. So regrettably, we're, I doubt we're ever going to see a Burrow Furnace made in USA cast iron pan at Walmart next to the made in China uh, cast iron, uh, enameled cast iron from Lodge or from Tramontina. Tramontina, meanwhile, is a pretty good brand in itself. I, I have no doubt that uh, a number of the people in the cast iron cooking group and maybe some people watching this video have, in fact, uh, do have a Tramontina enameled uh, cast iron pot in your kitchen. And to that, I can only say use it with pride. Yes. Even so, I mean, as I said, I definitely very much uh, envy you for having a, a, a Dutch oven from a uh, burrow furnace. <laughs> Sometime last week. Hey, number seven is a sweet sized pan. <laughs> uh, the humble peach. I love my burrow furnace. I saved. I saved for it, and it's a great workhorse. I plan to use it for the rest of my life. And again, you can certainly do that with pride. I have no objections to that whatsoever. And this, uh, these onions are already starting to soften, so we are uh, doing pretty good here at this point. That means it's time to throw in the chicken. That was easy. These are cut up chicken leg quarters, which is my favorite way of making this dish. 
they it started as about at about two pounds or so, maybe two and a half pounds of uh, chicken. It probably shrunk as it boiled. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I love using uh, chicken thighs and uh, and drumsticks, essentially cut up chicken quarters for this dish, uh, you know, because uh, ch leg quarters are great. Not only are they tasty dark meat, but they are also almost always the, the cheapest uh, chicken parts you can get at the store. You can usually find it for 99 cents a pound, so often cheaper than that, depending on where you shop. In that I got this for 99 cents a pound at Price Chopper. Oh, good. Meanwhile, in the midst of all this, the rice is boiling. So, move this up a wee bit. You can even see the uh, trail of steam coming from it. So, let's bring this out right now. And to that three cups of water, we have one and a half cups of rice. And all we have to do now is give it a quick stir. Might as well use the same, oops, it's using, might as well use the same spoon. Why not? It's all going the same place. Let's give it a quick stir. Cover it carefully because this is a hot lid turn the heat down to a simmer and with that all we have to do is wait and this rice will be done meanwhile back to uh, the chicken <laughs> ah so yeah my hope is that this will be done before yeah you know, by the time the of the end of this video in which case then I had better, you know, I'd better get on with it, month, shouldn't I? From here, okay, I always forget something. And that would simply be our salt and pepper. And that's about all the seasonings I'm going to add to this. You can certainly add more, but then again, the uh, vinegar is almost certainly going to drown the other seasonings out. And so from there, move this over a little bit so you can see what's going on. We got ourselves 28 ounce can of tomatoes. By the way, despite that video, I'm not opening it this way because I'm pretty sure if I did that, it would spill out all over the place. So I will do this the old fashioned way. The can opener is a made in USA can opener that I did not get at Wally World. And I've had it for a few years and it still works great. So again, these are, here we go. I think these are diced tomatoes, but they'll work fine. And from here, move that out of the way. From here, we simply fill the can with vinegar. Because yes, I do keep a gallon jug of vinegar in my chicken, in my kitchen. I told you I have a vinegar addiction. And there we go. And it's as easy as that. I'll close this and get that out of the way. Careful of the sharp edges there. Now we've got ourselves the makings of a very simple stewed chicken. As I mentioned, the uh, French recipe for chicken stewed in vinegar does not include nearly as much vinegar or nearly as much tomatoes for that matter which is why I say this is a very simple recipe that my, my Sicilian family obviously borrowed from France. It's, it's cheap, easy to make, the type of thing you can make on a work night, and the type of dish that could feed starve, well, not starving, but more like a family that is uh, trying to 
work that is trying to survive on a budget. Hmm. And having said that, are you going to fill that can with vinegar? Yes, I did. That's exactly what I did. Equal amounts of tomatoes and vinegar. But yes, this does have a very strong vinegar taste to it. I do not deny that. I had one person who made that, and she was I'm really surprised at how, as she said, super strong as far as the vinegar uh, taste was concerned. And to me, maybe because I've been eating this all my life, yeah, I think that's a lot of the appeal of it to me. Of course, think of it this way. If you're the type of person who really enjoys salt and vinegar chips, then uh, you will uh, likely enjoy this dish as well. If you feel that there is a limit or that the vinegar taste is too strong, well, you may want to actually look for an alternate recipe, like maybe the French way they do it, and that they use some tomatoes, some vinegar, but then top the rest of it off with uh, chicken broth. <laughs> hmm. Ah, uh, you are welcome. Okay, Fluffy, I owe you an apology. Okay. <laughs> I tried it. All right, I backed off. I backed off a bit. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah. So I guess you didn't want all that vinegar. Well, to which I can only say, yeah, just use the amount that you feel will be enough and then top the rest of it off with chicken broth or maybe even water. So hmm. now you guys go and share that knowledge. <laughs> uh, how does enamel cast iron compare to seasoned cast iron as, as far as longevity is concerned? Well, quite frankly, I don't, I don't think there's even a uh, comparison. Uh, enamel cast iron will wear out faster. I mean, I have already gone through <clears throat> uh, my big Le Creuset uh, Dutch oven that I found back in uh, 2011, for instance. Last year, I replaced it with the Stobe uh, enamel Dutch oven. This is actually my second large uh, Dutch oven as well because the uh, enamel was, in fact, starting to craze uh, on the bottom. Um, okay, there are no denying that there are some disadvantages to uh, using uh, to using enamel cast iron, namely that you have to treat it very gently so that you don't scratch or crack the enamel, which means no, as far as I'm concerned, no metal utensils at all when uh, using this. I like using wooden utensils uh, with this pot for that reason. Um, and I have actually... I also have an enamel, well, let me bring it out. I also have ugh, an enamel casserole, uh, cast iron casserole here, which is again, enamel cast iron. It's the, it's nine by 13. It's a, I used that just last week to make a lasagna, for instance, for Mother's Day. And especially for serving that, I managed to find a nice thick and heavy plastic spatula at a uh, restaurant store, especially for uh, serving from that enameled uh, cast iron uh, casserole there so that I can make brownies and other things and uh, not be afraid of scratching it. Even then, I do have to uh, treat it gently. So that, of course, is the big disadvantage of uh, using enamel cast iron. You can never really season it. You can't put a layer of seasoning on it. You will always need to use more uh, <coughs> oil and grease with when cooking with uh, enamel cast iron, then you might, then you would have, then you would need with a well seasoned cast iron pan. Of course, on the other hand, there are advantages to using enamel cast iron. For one, of course, the fact that you can use heavy amounts of tomato and vinegar in it, which is exactly what I'm doing right here. <laughs> um, as you know, tomatoes can affect the seasoning of cast iron. Vinegar can affect the seasoning of cast iron. You can use both in bare and seasoned cast iron for short periods of time, but long-term use will definitely affect the seasoning and uh, give your food a great color and a metallic taste which is why, again, I definitely recommend using an enameled cast iron pan for dishes of this sort, or for that matter, if you're going to be making any kind of a really nice fancy pasta sauce where you're going to be simmering it for uh, several hours, for instance. For, that, th for things like that, enameled cast iron really is the way to go. So uh, there are advantages and disadvantages to it, but that's one reason why I have a whole 
bunch of bare cast iron pots and skillets, whereas at this point I have three, no correction, four enameled uh, cast iron pans. I did have a Le Creuset uh, eight or nine inch enameled uh, ca cast iron skillet. In fact, I did at least one video on it a few years ago where I made scrambled eggs in it and they, and they came out all right. I ended up giving away that Le Creuset uh, enameled cast iron skillet to, uh, uh, to a good friend who needed one and I'm certain she's gotten a lot of use out of it. And I have no regrets for giving away cast iron to friends and family, and I still don't. Though, on the other hand, I do actually find myself missing that particular piece. If for no other reason than it would be good to do a video of more of cooking in an enameled uh, cast iron skillet. Uh, but, you know, you know how expensive Le Creuset is. All I can do is stay on the hunt and hope that I might come across another Le Creuset uh, cast iron skillet at some point, which could happen. I mean, I found it once. I might be able to find it again. <laughs> uh, Jacob Genge, uh, Genge just bought a 12. Paw Paw Den, thanks for the pros and cons on enameled cast iron. Well, well, thank you. I'm glad everybody enjoys that, of course. So, <laughs> um, and then from there, uh, have you ever made shak uh, shakshuka? Uh, if I pronounced it right, I'm not sure if, if yours says shakahooka, but either way, great for enameled iron. It's one of many dishes I have yet to make, unfortunately. That's the thing is that, as I've said enough times, I've been cooking now for the past 10 years, but that means that there are so many, many dishes that I have yet to try, and I'm looking forward to eventually trying them. So, um that's why, among other things, I've got a, another plan for my next um, video coming up. Well, for one, I've got to finish that video of doing those smash burgers. And then we'll come to the next one. Uh, lately, I've also gotten into this kick of uh, trying out really different uh, cast iron <coughs> dishes in cast iron. And that's why I made that bunny chow last week. And that's why, as well, again, I'm bringing back Ma's Vinegar Chicken after it. Uh, it's been several years since that video was uh, produced, so it's certainly a high time to bring that one back. <laughs> um, have I been called back to work? Uh, well, I actually, I have been working home for the last year, and in fact, just the other day, the uh, announcement came in from my employer that we will, in fact, be going back to the office. I guess it seems that uh, they feel that the majority of our of our employees in our com in our company will be vaccinated by uh, June 1st, and so we are going to be heading back to the office then. <laughs> and yeah, that includes me. My second uh, COVID vaccination is uh, this coming Monday. So I do understand the second shot is really the one that apparently has a, a you know has a real reaction to it. So all I can do is prepare and brace myself for it. Okay. Meanwhile, we've got always oh, like her. Oh yeah. Hmm. Um. Okay. I've mentioned already. As I said, we've got the uh, lodge enamel cast iron and a uh, the uh, enamel cast iron here in the back is from um, Bed Bath and Beyond, Bed Bugs and Beyond, and it is their house brand as well, which they have made in China. So, um. I, well, I really bought that pretty much sight unseen. I got it because it cost $20. So I don't have details about the, ena about the en enameled other than, the f other than like other pieces. It has a uh, white enameled inside. And as such, I can, I'm confident that no, there is no uh, cadmium uh, on the use on the inside and definitely no lead. So I'm still not worried about that as all at all. How's your arm doing? Well, actually, my arm is doing pretty good. I'm somewhere around, oh, I don't know, maybe 85% or more back to where I used to be in that I still get twinges. I get twinges in my wrist still if I uh, pick, try to pick up something heavy, like this uh, enamel cast iron pot, for instance. But all I can do is keep practicing, and uh, eventually it'll uh, get back uh, up to speed. So, but... Um, Okay, yeah, no, regarding um, the uh, regarding enameled cast iron wearing out, I think I will say that story again in that back in 2011, I made one, an, 
what I feel was an incredible score in that at a uh, local flea market, I managed to score a huge Le Creuset 13 quart enameled cast iron uh, Dutch oven or French oven as they call it for $6. Yes, that's six bucks. So believe me, when I saw that huge uh, Le Creuset pot and a $6 price, I could not get my $6 out fast enough, despite the fact that there was no lid on that pot and it had actually been beat up quite a bit. The inside was was stained pretty badly. And despite all my efforts, I never was able to get the stains completely out of that pot. Uh, also, that, that was when I was really learning how to uh, cook in cast iron. And so as a result, like, uh, like my other pieces, I gave that pot a lot of abuse. Um, and... Among other things, I actually took it camping with me. I made uh, some dishes in it that really, really burned badly on the bottom. So it did take uh, about um, nine years, but I finally reached the point where the enamel on the inside of that uh, Le Creuset um, pot was in, fact, uh, was, in fact, peeling off and cracking. So unfortunately, it was time to say goodbye to it. And that was when I uh, made the investment and instead uh, replaced that with a stove cast iron uh, Dutch oven. And this is something I've uh, used several times now and have very much enjoyed it. And this one does, in fact, have a uh, good lid on it. Oh. oh, yeah, this is what I mean about using my wrist. That didn't exactly hurt, but I did feel that in my wrist. Nonetheless, this is a uh, good heavy lid to uh, go with this uh, enamel Dutch oven. The interesting thing about Stobe is that they that they actually do color the insides of their pots black, and that was one of the big reasons why I decided to get this instead of another Le Creuset, because you know there would with the with the dark color on the inside there would be less chance that it would be that it would stain and I would have to clean it in that way. Uh, this this is enameled cast iron. It is not bare cast iron. Uh, I've already made, as I mentioned, my family's recipe for uh, pasta sauce a few times in this, and um, I'm very happy with this thing so far. It has been a very very good investment. Uh, also. I did find out uh, just after I got it that everybody pronounces it Staub or Staub, but in fact, according to their own website, they pronounce it Stobe, like stove. Um, so this is actually a Stobe Dutch oven, not a Staub Dutch oven. And as and if you disagree with that, well, again, go on to Stobe's own website and uh, watch a couple of videos, and you can <laughs> see it for yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Let's get back to here and the uh, Lodge uh, Dutch oven, which, as I mentioned, is uh, one of the few Lodge pieces that is uh, made in China and not made in the USA. And yes, that does include the uh, cast iron in it as well. I have actually seen some uh, rumors posted on the uh, cast iron groups that supposedly... Lodge makes the cast iron in the USA, ships it to China, has it enameled, and then ships it back to uh, the USA. That is simply not true, unfortunately, for the simple reason that the cut that the cost of shipping is it would be excessively prohibitive. I mean, shipping it to China as well as shipping it back really isn't any need for it as, as opposed to simply having the uh, cast iron made in China. Also, if they were to do that, then I would think that would be a an excuse for a uh, lodge to put a made in USA tag on their enamel Dutch ovens. But they're honest and they don't do that. So this that both of those are reasons why I I can uh, pretty much confidently say even though I have no inside information with Lodge I can confidently say that this is in fact entirely made in China. I repeat though it is in fact to uh, Lodge's quality control standards. So that's well this is again it's that is of course due to the simple fact that there are no enamel cast iron makers uh, in the U.S. To which they say, well, why doesn't Lodge build their own enameling uh, plant? 
because you know the cost of uh, built of an enameled production would building one of those uh, production facilities would be uh, enormous. I would say it would probably run close. Well, maybe not close, but what well uh, well uh, a sizable percentage of the cost that it took for them to build a second foundry. So as far as cost savings are concerned, well, I don't see Lodge doing anything otherwise. And uh, that's why Burrow Furnace, well, at least for the time being, will continue to be the only USA-based manufacturer of American cast, of enameled cast iron. Even Griswold uh, stopped making their enameled cast iron early on. Um, I don't think... There were any enameled Griswold pieces made after World War II, but I'm sure somebody who knows more about Griswold's enameled pieces could correct me on that. <laughs> Terry Sinchev, hello, and hello to you too. Uh, glad to see you back here again. Uh, Jose Latias, I see so many enameled on offer up for a really good price. I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. Yeah, the cheaper cast iron really is tempting. I will say that, especially the ones you can get at places like uh, Aldi. Um, has Sears gone out of business? Because they always had enameled cast iron there. But on the other hand, really, it seems like just about every celebrity chef and other other cook out there has their own brand of cast iron and it's almost always enamel cast iron you can get a martha stewart enamel dutch oven, uh dutch oven for no difficulty at all um wolfgang puck has his own line of uh enamel cast iron i think guy fieri does as well so <laughs> uh regardless of your opinion of guy fieri is cooking well, the guy, his name is known, so, and he does, in fact, have a, a line of enamel cast iron. For that matter, a number of uh, other big box stores all have their own house brands. As I mentioned, Lodge has Tramontina. I don't think Tramontina is Lodge's brand in particular, but nonetheless, you can see a lot of that at, uh, at uh, Walmart. Whereas, on the other hand, um, there are, uh, you know, as I mentioned already, Aldi has its own house brand. I believe even if you go to Target, you can see their own their own brands as well. Not to mention the uh, enameled Dutch ovens you can see at places like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. They do sell uh, discounted large Dutch ovens as well as uh, other enameled uh, cast iron there. And, uh, great. Oh yeah. The Brimfield video, uh, recommend this video. Yeah. Oh yes. I, uh, I only found out a few days ago that as far as we can tell, Brimfield will be open again this coming July. And yes, I am definitely looking forward to returning there because, you know, that would make a nice subject of, of a video right there. 2021 return to return to Brimfield and more cast iron. <laughs> Um, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Peg Tooth, there will be a big Pyrex auction in June. Check out Curiosity Incorporated on YouTube. Oh, that's interesting. I'm wondering if I might be able to find a vintage. Um, as you know, my, my uh, vintage Pyrex is all of uh, one style. What do they call it? Uh, Amish butter print. I wonder if I can get a butter uh, holder or butter dish in that print. TJ Maxx has really good deals in enamel cast iron pans when they get it in. Yeah, you never know what you'll find there at TJ Maxx, but it's definitely worth browsing there for a lot of reasons. The enamel cast iron is one of them. It was at TJ Maxx last year that I found that USA-shaped uh, cast iron pan as well. So, so um, not to mention the uh, star-shaped cast iron. Let me uh, quickly get that one out. I found this at uh, TJ Maxx uh, the um, about five days before Christmas a year ago for five dollars. So, <laughs> yeah, this is one of those, those things I could not pass up. <laughs> Even though it is uh, definitely Asian made. <laughs> Um, am I locked in the bathroom? No, I'm not locked in the bathroom. If you're referring to trouble, well, he seems to have calmed down. He is now, uh, 
curled up and is actually taking a nap on this nice furry chair we have here. So he must have worn himself out or maybe this, this warm weather is affecting him. You know, he's going to be one year old now at the end, at the beginning of June. And this is his first, well, his first spring and his first hot summer. So I don't think he knows what uh, he is in for yet with that furry coat of his. <laughs> And Jose Latias, wish I could stay, had a great evening. My wife found a cast iron pan in the shape of Texas for 10 bucks. So, yeah, I've seen a couple of those on sale for about 20 bucks. So, yeah, you got a good deal there. One is uh, for sale at, how do you pronounce that? Is it H E B? Is it Heb uh, down there in the uh, Texas area? And recently I found out that Kohl's, you know, that clothing. Uh, big box store, Kohl's, they actually had a Texas-shaped cast iron uh, pan as well on their on their website. So <clears throat> it's worth looking for if anybody uh, really wants one of those. So, um, you know, I'm not sure if we've uh, already uh, covered the subject of enamel cast iron. I mean, we've mentioned already, thanks to uh, JD Hive for you know that there is some that there has been some controversy over um, over lead and cadmium uh, used in the uh, used in the glaze in enamel cast iron. I will say again, and I will stand by this, that uh, I do feel um, cast iron that enamel cast iron is safe for the simple reason that um, there have not been any instances of of enamel cast iron being seen and testing and to be above the acceptable limits. And unfortunately, zero PPM is uh, not what they consider to be an acceptable limit. Um, nonetheless, the acceptable limits are still there, still microscopic and even smaller than that. Not to mention for the fact that again, you only uh, contact come into contact with the outside of these pans very briefly, and you are not cooking with them, and it does not get into your food. Um, as mentioned, 19th century enameled cast iron actually was known for using enamel in the glaze. And that's one reason why I do encourage people do not cook in 19th century enamel cast iron. Of course, another reason for that as well is that uh, that uh, cast, uh, the enamel in that is almost always extremely brittle, often cracked and flaking. And if you were to try cooking it, in one of those pots, the enamel would almost certainly shatter. And so, again, do not cook in 19th century enameled cast iron. That's uh, really about all we can say about that. Um, when lead contamination became an issue, American manufacturers took steps to remove lead from uh, such items as uh, cookware and the like. My understanding is that Griswold removed removed lead from their uh, enameled cast iron in the earlier parts of the uh, 20th century. But as I said, I would still recommend uh, double checking on that at places like the uh, Griswold and Wagner Society rather than just simply take my word for it. This is my understanding. And uh, there, I do not believe there have been any uh, real exposés suggesting otherwise. Um, I should also say again, and I have said before that I do not consider misled, aka lead safe mama to be a reliable source either for the, for the simple reason that is that she, I do consider her to be biased and as such, not a uh, reliable source. But I'm not going, really going to get into, into a long argument over that at this time. I'm just more interested right now in uh, cooking some uh, chicken. <laughs> and Peg Tooth, sadly, 27 hours away. Okay. <laughs> Musicians House Series. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. We're having a, having a chat here, and that's a, and that's a good thing as well. Uh, we're only at 50 minutes in. Usually, you know, usually at this point, um, it's usually past an hour into this kind of, uh, you know, into this part, into this part of the video here. So actually I'm surprised that this has been uh, going so fast as well. Nonetheless, actually one thing I should do now that I'm thinking of it, <laughs> I probably overdid it. In fact, is turn off the uh, simmer on this rice here. So in that case, let's do a bit of a reveal, shall we? 
bring this over here carefully. Bring this over here. <laughs> and this is one reason why I love cooking in cast iron. So easy to uh, cook rice. And for that reason, I still do not have myself a rice cooker. I still have seen no need for it because we've got ourselves some nice, simple, fluffy jasmine rice right here. And the chicken is going to be served over rice. And there's really nothing to it. <laughs> all right. The, the best of all, the cast iron will certainly keep this warm, even though I've uh, taken it off the heat. So far, so good. Now... We can back, get back again to the lodge pot. <laughs> oh, did I hear? Oh, that was just a smoke detector. Okay. Hmm. I can also say that I am definitely smelling that vinegar right now. So we are doing pretty good. I think it's time we can probably do a peek of it. In fact, so far, so good. All we really have to do is cook this until the chicken is falling apart, which I don't think is going to be quite yet, although it looks like not too long from now. I would give it maybe another half hour at the very most. Hmm. So genuine. My daughter has a, uh, Terry Sinchef, my daughter has a 10-inch cast iron skillet from Kohl's. <laughs> it is low-sided and is not bad for pancakes. Oh, that sounds interesting. Uh, it, it is a uh, cast iron skillet, or would you say, is, is it a griddle? So, um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a low pan of that, of that kind as well. Um, if it's a low pan like that may actually be good for other, uh, Things like a uh, chef skillet as well. So, hmm. Ms. Ventress, thank you for okay for the comment. Okay, having said all that, I think I should probably talk about one of the other subjects that is very common when it comes to uh, enamel cast iron, and that would be cleaning it. You know, because once this thing is uh, all done, there's going to be uh, some staining on the uh, on the bottom of the pot. I can almost guarantee that. Mom cooked vinegar chicken quite a bit, and the especially the the uh, pots on the inside had a uh, definitely had something of a tinge to them from the, all those tomatoes and vinegar. Um, that's where the subject again of cleaning enamel cast iron comes in. Uh, one night, one of the nice things, of course, about enamel cast iron is that yes, you can clean it with uh, soap and water and dish soap, and in fact, we highly recommend it. Uh, you should not put an enamel cast iron pan into the dishwasher because there is always still the possibility that it could craze or crack, and naturally, we don't want that to happen. On the other hand, a nice easy scrub with uh, dish soap and a sponge should be, uh, maybe even a softer scrubby, should be uh, more than enough in most instances to uh, get a uh, pot like this clean. As for stained enamel, you know, how do I get the stains clean? There are several uh, options available, including some enamel cleaners. I think they call it enamel bright for one, uh, which is uh, very common. Barkeeper's Friend actually does a good job cleaning enamel cast iron as well, although you have to be sure that you use the uh, liquid stuff and not the, and not the uh, dry stuff because, again, the dry stuff is abrasive and we do not want it to uh, scratch the enamel on the inside. Although I think I did that a few months ago when I did a video on cleaning uh, this cat, uh, cleaning this large cast iron pot. I didn't scratch it, but what I did was I made a slurry, which is where, as you know, you mix in some water and the um, barkeeper's friend and stir it up and make a slurry, and then from there you clean it. After that, if that doesn't work, then one other option, fairly common, is is a bleach soak. 
in which case you use only a tiny, tiny bit of bleach, like maybe a, a couple of tablespoons of bleach or so, and then fill the entire pot after that with the water to dilute the bleach and also be sure that the water goes all the way up to the rim of the pot because the bleach will, in fact, bleach it and give you a nice white color. And anything above the water line where the bleach doesn't touch, you can actually see the uh, color difference. So there will actually be a line if um, if you don't in your, in your enamel, if you don't uh, completely fill it up to the brim with water when you are using bleach in that manner. You just simply fill it up all the way to the brim, let it sit for a couple of hours, then you uh, drain it. And uh, again, give it a nice uh, uh, give it a nice washing out with uh, dish with uh, dish soap and uh, water and uh, that should be it. So it's not that difficult. As long as you are careful, of course, not to have anything really nasty burn itself onto uh, enamel cast iron. There is always that risk. Uh, because with uh, regular bare cast iron, here's one of the advantages of bare cast iron. You know, Pretty much no matter how badly something is burned on, you can scrub it off of bare cast iron with no worries at all. Just some elbow grease and steel wool if you want, if need be, and that'll take care of it. You cannot do that with enamel cast iron. <laughs> so you definitely have to consider what you are cooking when it comes to enamel cast iron. That is one of the reasons why I actually recommend a bare Dutch oven first as a person's first Dutch oven, even before an enamel Dutch oven. Well, as I said, an enamel Dutch oven does have many, many uses. I have gotten a lot of use as well from a bare cast iron Dutch oven. And I highly recommend using one, especially because you, all you need to do is season it and it will be as durable and long lasting as your uh, cast iron skillet. Hmm. Uh, does Lodge have any guarantee against chips or do they repair? Lodge, uh, this is one thing about Lodge. They have world-class customer service and that I we have seen many instances on the cast iron cooking group of someone who has ordered a lodge enameled uh, pot only to find that it did in fact chip during shipping even when they ordered it like say from Amazon and not necessarily or Walmart and not necessarily from lodge they called up lodges uh, um, customer service and lodge sent them a replacement brand new uh, enameled cast iron pan for free and let them keep the original one. There is no need to return it. So no, Lodge does not repair enamel uh, ca damaged cast iron, enameled or otherwise. They will simply replace it for you if they consider it be within the warranty. And apparently some shipping damage, uh, in a lot of cases, Lodge does in fact consider that to be under warranty. So, oh yeah, no, uh, Trouble is definitely... Uh, fast asleep now. He's curled up and he, you know, as uh, my roommate Jamie likes to say, uh-oh, the cat's broken. <laughs> let, me see, let me do that there quickly. Where is he? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, back to the cast iron. <laughs> Started before you, so I'm finishing a plate of this just now. It's still pretty tangy. There's no denying that. I, As I said, I will not deny that this uh, vinegar chicken has a very strong taste to it. And what's more, if you were to leave it to uh, soak or settle overnight, the taste... Um, it's hard to say if you leave it by itself, it will probably get stronger, but if you mix it with rice, it will probably dilute and the taste may not be as strong if you were to check this say tomorrow morning. On the other hand, just the thought of that and the scent of this is making my mouth water. <laughs> um, what is the worst meal that you ever, ever had to remove from your, uh, cast iron, both enameled or seasoned cast iron? Well, there was, as a matter of fact, it was one that helped to ruin the um, 
Le Creuset enamel Dutch oven. And that's when I actually took that Le Creuset out on a camping trip. I mean, I had paid six bucks for it. So even though I understand how uh, valuable and priceless Le Creuset is, I did put it through a lot of abuse. And I put it over a slow, and I actually slow cooked, um, was it Boston baked beans? Uh, I don't think it was even Boston baked beans. I think it was rather a um, stew for a good 12 hours or so in that enamel Dutch oven uh, on that camping trip. And it burned, and the bottom of it burned pretty badly, unfortunately. I, I had really carbon uh, all over the uh, bottom of that Dutch oven that Dutch oven and I never was able to completely clean off the stains and that probably contributed to it uh, cracking or uh, chipping uh, on the inside as well, which is something I have no intention of doing with my stove Dutch oven, believe me. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was probably the closest to a disaster in my cast iron that I think I've had, at least in that respect. I've made a few dishes that did not turn out well, but they usually we're able to uh, clean out uh, pretty nicely. Chicken cacciatore. <laughs> I know that's spelled wrong. Is he making invisible chicken? Um, is he making adobo chicken? Uh, oh, me you're talking about, I guess. Uh, no, not exactly. As the title of this video says, I am making vinegar chicken. And let's stir it once again, shall we? Ooh, now this thing is definitely boiling good at this point. I may even have to turn the heat down a little bit. Nonetheless, yeah, this time I used diced tomatoes rather than crushed tomatoes. Might have been better, I think, to use crushed tomatoes. However, nonetheless, it does look like the chicken is coming off the bone. And I do say, oh yeah, I'd say we are at the point now where this is likely done. So I am happy with that. <laughs> that means, <laughs> oh yeah, I can, I can smell this all right. <sighs> As I said, this was uh, stewed only in tomatoes and vinegar. I did not use water or chicken broth in this. I did boil the chicken in advance, but I did drain that completely. And it does look like we've gotten to the point where this is all coming apart. So I am definitely looking forward to this. It does not give us a thick sauce. I will be the first to admit that. It is actually a pretty thin sauce. But that's one reason why I like to serve it over rice, which I'm going to do right now. All right, let's dig ourselves out a nice wooden spoon. I'll probably turn this off, in fact. As it's still bubbling. I can see that. And yeah, that's about right. Now we can get ourselves some rice here. Actually, let me get a better bowl. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm being a little fussy like that, I admit. Here we go. This is a nice bowl. Got this one at a uh, at a uh, Chinese market. Okay, so all we got to do now, carefully, scoop ourselves out some rice. Come on, there we go. And here comes the chicken. Hmm. Hot, hot, hot. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. And some of this juice. You can't forget that because, as I said, that's not water. It's entirely vinegar and tomatoes and some of the uh, chicken juices as well. Which means, there we are. I am, oh. Oh, watch myself. I accidentally touched that. Anyway, this is what we get. As I said, I've been eating this since I was a toddler. Ma's vinegar chicken. And yeah, 
Oh, oh yeah. Ah, ah, just the smell of this. Not only is it, not only is it bringing back nostalgia, it's also cleaning up my sinuses. <laughs> so I am very much looking forward to this. Can't wait. I didn't even realize how long it's been since I've had this. So, yeah, it's so easy that the chicken just comes right off the bone. Mm-hmm. Mm mm. Oh, yeah. As I said, for me, <clears throat> wow. <laughs> it's even affecting my, <laughs> my throat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As you said, it has a very strong vinegar taste. I do not deny that. Prepare yourself <clears throat> for a strong vinegar taste if, you, uh, if you've never had this before. But as I said, for me, this is the taste of nostalgia, too. Mm. Because it makes me think of my mom <clears throat> and Nana, too, both of whom were serving this when I was a wee lad. Mmm. I can't talk with my mouth full. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fluffy Otter, I hope you can move tomorrow. I know my grandparents getting old isn't fun. Yeah, I know that feeling all too well. Double duty meal. Yes, indeed. Nostalgia. And it'll also clear your sinuses, especially since the pollens come back. You may very well appreciate it for that reason. <laughs> In the course of one week... We have gone through our traditional jump from winter to summer here in New England. We were wearing sweatshirts right up until last week. Now, the temperature is expected to get into the 80s by the weekend, maybe more. <laughs> uh, am I tied up at work? Uh, I hope not. I'll find out myself when I uh, check uh, back at well, work tomorrow. So, hmm. But yes, if you have a vinegar fetish, I would really suggest you try this dish. Um, it will really burn your tonsils the way a good strong vinegar should. Otherwise, you might want to dilute it. <laughs> oh, but nonetheless, that's what we have at this point. Up to here in Vancouver, it's so bad I want to scratch out my eyes. I'm guessing that's talking about pollen. <laughs> my condolences for that. But still, that's what we have now. So here we are. We've got Ma's vinegar chicken along with jasmine rice cooked in enameled cast iron. I can only hope folks uh, have enjoyed this. So, I mean, this has been a nice quiet evening tonight. Thank goodness nothing bad has happened. Seem to have finally gotten these glitches under control. I think we're at maybe the third or even the fourth week in a row where we've had a flawless... Um, Feed, so I'm also happy about that. I like vinegar and slaw, too. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's what we call a salad. <laughs> and with that, I'm really thinking that this should be uh, all because I'm, I know most of these nights, it seems like we've been going for another, you know, until an hour, 20, an hour, 30 minutes. But really, I'd have to say we probably covered our, uh, covered our bases here. As I mentioned, I cheated a little bit by pre-boiling the chicken so that it would be done uh, in time for the end of this uh, for the end of this video. Otherwise, you may have to stew it for about two hours or so. The real trick is, you know, it's done when the vinegar when the chicken is coming off the bone. At which point, then we are about done. Hmm. So. Having said that, as always, I do appreciate everybody here who uh, shows up regularly here on Cast Iron Wednesday. These are a lot of fun. And I do have some plans as well for next week where I think we're going to be getting back into a little bit more deep frying. And uh, other than that, though, of course, well, hey, we've got the weekend coming up. Um, as I mentioned, I've got my COVID shot on Monday, but that's all right. I'll get over that. And then in two, and then uh, a week from uh, Monday, of course, is Memorial Day. One of the best cast iron cooking days of the year, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. As is every, as is I hope a lot of other people here. So 
Thank you all for watching, everyone. Yeah, Papa Dan, see y'all next week. Or as they used to say, was it on Hee Haw, I think? Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> it's easy to say. Yeah, it's funny that a New Englander Yankee is saying that. <laughs> but nonetheless, there we go. Um, once again, I very much appreciate, as always, everybody who comes back here. Because, you know, spending these live chats with you is really what makes this a lot of fun. And I can only thank you, everybody, for watching. So... Once again, see you all next Wednesday.